Hey y'all, so no show today, but we have an exclusive clip from an upcoming one-on-one -on -one with social activist Tariq Nasheed discussing reparations and who should get it. And he even gets into an interesting conversation with one of our very own. But before we get to that, don't forget early voting has started. Voting is not the only answer, but it's a powerful tool we have for change, so don't waste it. If you're in Georgia and need a ride to the polls, call People's Agenda at 877-524-8683. Now to Tariq Nasheed. Your current work today, yeah. um, it seems that you're pushing for reparations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does reparations look like for you? Um, it looks like cash payments for foundational black Americans, the same thing that Native Americans get. Native Americans, they get cash payments, they get casinos, they get um, free medical care. Right. They get all types of perks and benefits from the federal government, and foundational black Americans need to get the same thing. Yeah, and it's just so, um, I mean, it, I feel like it exposes itself, right? Yeah. Because you look at um, the Japanese came here, mm -hmm. the internment camps, they experienced something that was not fair and just to their people, and they were able to kind of get some support from our government. Yes, indeed. You have the Native Americans. Clearly, they are definitely owed mm -hmm. um, being um, people that were here. And they've received. And they, they received. They continue to receive. And so why do, like, why do, who's at fault at this point, right? Like, why do they keep kind of sidestepping? the obvious because we keep letting them sidestep us because we we keep letting them talk us into this minority coalition whenever we start talking about what we need as black people they say sure we'll do it for all minorities mm -hmm. and we go along with that thinking that there's this coalition that will push so if all of these other groups get something it's going to come to us too and right. that always backfires on us that started in the 60s when we start saying hey we need civil rights for black people then they said, we're gonna let over these immigrant groups and we'll give civil rights to minorities. So we had a lot of these non-black people mm -hmm. receiving a lot of stuff that we fought for as black people. And yeah. the same thing happens now. We fight for certain things and they say, we're gonna give it to people of color. When we say we want certain job positions, they say, sure, we'll give it to people of color. So yeah. now we got a bunch of white Hispanics in certain positions and they're practicing anti-black racism against us, especially in Los Angeles. Right. So we keep falling for this trick bag. So this is why now we're very, we're being very specific about tangible benefits for a very specific group of black people, foundational black Americans. Yeah, I want to touch on that. Um, that's happening in Los Angeles. It seems to be like a an evident divide, um, or somewhat of a where I'm coming from Atlanta, so I'll, I'll need some briefing. Yeah. But before I get into that space, it does seem that white America um, fears us in position. And I think it was always this stipulation that we will do to them what they've done upon right. us. And I don't know why, I, I guess because there's a guilt there, mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't personally see us doing that. I don't see black people owning slaves and just being cool about it and drinking lemonade while they're whooping your grandmother in the back. Well, the thing is, you have to understand what white culture has become. Mm -hmm. See, in order to give value to white culture, you have to have something that has no value. There has to be an opposite. And we are the opposite that gives them value because they have told us and they have designated us to be a valueless group. And they are the valued group right. that has created a schism. And then they put buffer classes in the middle. Hispanics, Asian, Middle Eastern people, yeah. you understand? And then they give them certain little secondary privileges and benefits over us. But we always have to remain on the bottom as black people. Mm -hmm. We have to change that culture. We have to not accept that as yeah. black people. When we say we're not going to accept this, everything is going to have to be equal and not only equal, we're going to have to get equity in us being mistreated for so long and deprived of resources so long. So we're going to need a little bit extra. That part. You, you see? Yeah. I guess, you know, for me, I'm I'm kind of past the... Rep, I'm, reparations doesn't do it for me, personally. And I'll explain my position. But in hearing your answer, I think you articulated... Where's your family from? My family is from South Georgia. Georgia, you know, the South... Send us slaves? Both of them? I haven't dived that deep. Okay. But I, my yeah. father Are is... You? My father's ha my father's African. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. What part of Africa is the family? From? Nigeria. Okay, there we go. So, so you have to see if you even qualify for reparations. You might not be qualified for it. Mm -hmm. you, you see? Yeah. Because yeah, the people qualified for reparations are the foundational Black Americans who descended from slaves. Got gotcha. you. Dig? So my, with that being said, right, I still would identify, you know, myself as a Black man in this world and mm -hmm. and what we've had to go up against. But my question, I guess, for me is. At what point do we say, you know what, they're never going to do us right? Because I feel like 
we're leaning on them to do what's right. Mm -hmm. And I just have personally, and, and the reason why I'm putting myself out there, because I think there's people that want to support mm -hmm. and that have their own, they just kind of gave it, given up mm -hmm. and we're maybe trying to figure out other ways to come about it. But the thing is, um, that's the thing that makes us unique as Foundation of Black Americans. They've yeah. always said what they weren't going to do. And we said, no, you're going to do it. They didn't want to release us from slavery. They never planned on releasing us from yeah. slavery. And they tried to give it to Abraham Lincoln as if he just found it in the goodness of his heart to release us. We have to understand during antebellum slavery, there were major slave rebellions and successful ones that they don't talk about. Uh, the Seminole Wars, that was really a slave rebellion. Many of those people were black people mm. fighting against the U.S. government and actually winning. And there were black people living in certain swamp areas fighting and, and destroying plantations and running back into the swamp. So we yeah. were actively fighting against slavery. And those same people came out of the swamp and started fighting in the Civil War. Right. Many black people were fighting in the Civil War. And that's why the Civil War was won by the Union, because of the black people people. We were helping to free ourselves. They didn't want to free us. Let's go to the 1960s. They didn't want to give us civil rights. White people never woke up and said, hey, let's stop with all of these Jim Crow signs. This is wrong. They never said that. Black people hit the streets of America and started lighting businesses on fire, sniping people from roofs, and, and creating havoc and saying, we're not going to take this no more. Yeah. Then they decided, okay, let's give them some civil rights. So I can lean... I, and I think that's where I was able to kind of put that out there yeah. is because I respect that, which is you're not asking. Yeah. I used to think, rep I used to associate reparation with asking. Mm -hmm. You're more so, it seems, demanding, and we're not going to let up until we get what we're supposed Absolutely. to get. Is that the energy? That's the energy. And yeah. we. this is the first time that we have done this because the reparations movement has a lot of legs now. Yep. We've kind of touched on reparations in the past. Yeah, we did. It got shot down. So we just, oh, well, these white folks are scaring us. So we're like, you know what? We're getting killed in the streets right now. We have homeless black people all over the place. We've elevated all of these other groups. Um, the justice system isn't working for us. Black men and women are in jail in droves. We have nothing to lose right now. So we need to get what's owed to us. And we're going to be focused on that. And the political structure, they keep trying to get us to take our focus onto something else. Well, we'll give money to HBCUs. That's not reparations. Yeah. There's a bunch of white people at HBCUs now. Yeah. Well, we're going to give um, money for the environment. Uh, damn it. I'm cool on that. The, the environment will be here whenever. <laughs> we need tangibles for foundational black Americans. And yeah. we're very specific about that. Now, if you like that clip, then you can join Tariq Nasheed at a rally for reparations in D.C. on November 5th. To do so, visit rallyforreparations.com. And listen, I've seen this interview, and I think regardless of which side you stand on, I do think this conversation is worth the eyes and ears of our community. Look, we got to move forward in this country. And in order to do so, we have to have tough conversations, even if even if it's in situations like this. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And stay tuned for the full interview as Tariq discusses his current work, the state of Black America, and some of his classic relationship advice. And don't forget to vote. And if you need a ride to the polls, call the Coalition for the People's Agenda at 877-524-8683. Once again, that's 877-524-8683. Get out there and vote. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson. What's up? I'm Terrence Sims. For years, you've come to us to get the latest news in comedy and for your favorite comedians. Now, you can come to us for even more news in the world of sports, music, and pop culture. We're bringing you some of our classic shows you love, like Unforgotten, the Comedy Hype News Show, and more one-on-one -on -one interviews. We're more than just laughs. We're the culture, the leader in truth. And well, your streamer got a little more blacker. Welcome to Hype Plus.